All right, everybody. Here's the gun review. I've been selling some of my collection downsizing, but there has been one that I've really wanted for a while. And um, it comes in a really nice case. So I've always been a fan of Taurus revolvers. Um, I've never had any issues with them. I carry a GX4 um, 9mm subcompact um, when I'm not carrying my Smith J frame. But there's something just about this particular one. I wanted to give it a try. I've always liked the Smith Performance Center pistols, but I, or revolvers, but I didn't want to spend you know eight hundred to a thousand and up and up. So when Taurus came out with the Executive eight fifty six, I figured you know what let's let's give it a try. The price is right at uh, five hundred and eight dollars at my local gun store. Comes in a really nice vault by Pelican. So this is something that would be TSA approved. So if you needed to transport it on a plane or something, and you declare it at the uh, checking counter, and you can properly lock it. It's a really, really nice case, which is already a step up from anything you normally get from Taurus, which is a cardboard box. So, you've been promoted. The 856, and this will be the documents and warranty card and save $30 as a coupon if you want to get a Viridian Red Laser Grip from Hogue. And then there's a little, probably going to be a welcome something to tell me this is what your extra $200 over the standard price got you. So these are all hand fit. Um, these are, there's a separate group. So what they're doing down in the uh, Bainbridge, Georgia manufacturing plant where they assemble these is they go down the line and they pick out the best ones with the best tolerances that they can find. And then they go into a separate clean room with a completely different workforce that is separate from everybody else. These are going to be more of their craftsmen and the people that have been there the longest and have the most experience and best attention to detail. <clears throat> and then they hand assemble these, they hand polish them, they hand tune the trigger, and they make sure that everything on this is at that next level. So what we have here is an 856 in a stainless steel frame. The wood grips, I think they're made for them by Adamant or Adamant, one of those. It's like it, These are really nice walnut grips. Um, but being that it's a standard frame um, for a, a Taurus um, small frame, like the 856, you can get Hogue or other grips if you want. However, this feels really good, just the right amount of checkering and all that. So really nice. I can't get over how nice this case is. There's no real room for ammo and stuff in here, but I believe if you're checking it through TSA... The ammo would have to be separate from the gun anyway. So really nice presentation, really nice solid. I mean, Pelican makes a good case. I would imagine if I wanted to go out and buy an actual Pelican case like this, this thing is kind of heavy. It's a little bit built like a brute. I don't know. I'm guessing that's like a $50 case. So that's where some of your money's going is the really nice case. All right. This one is made in Bainbridge, Georgia. It's got a much nicer. All the engraving is nicer here. Um, the fitting looks a little bit nicer. You don't. You almost don't even feel those lines there. Let's go ahead. It's a brand new gun, but we are doing a safety check. This is six shots of 38 Special Plus P. And like I said, it's got the hand tuned trigger. We'll go. We'll bring out my Smith in a minute just to compare the fit and finish. I've also got some holsters that I had for my other 856s. Um, it is a concealed. Hammer, so the hammer's been bobbed from the factory, and it's a really beautiful finish. I mean, there this is silky, silky smooth. That's a really nice finish. That is definitely a step up from their normal stainless, which has a little bit of texture to it, which I don't mind so much. But that texture can, after a while with holster wear, it'll smooth out certain spots. Um, also, depending on the leather you're using in a holster, sometime that l real micro pebbling, that little bit of texturing is abrasive on the leather. And so as you pull it out, you, you have bits of fuzz and leather and stuff sticking to it. This, I have a feeling, is going to just glide in and out. That is very, very slick. The action here, it's brand new, so everything's a little bit tight. That's going to need to break in. Trigger-wise, we're already clear. We'll do a third check just to make sure. No bullets. That's an excellent trigger. I'm very impressed with that. The handle feels good in the hand, although I would imagine for concealed carry, this is going to be a little bit large. Let's do a quick size comparison. Let's get the paperwork out of here. 
So what we've got is the Smith J frame that I'll often carry. All of us, all uh, chambers are empty. So size-wise, you know, it's a bit bigger. Now I would say that if you put on one of these Bantam grips, um, you'll definitely get it down to about here. But something like this, I mean, you can get your whole hand on. I wouldn't mind something just a little bit smaller, but then it kind of takes away from the aesthetic and what they're trying to achieve here. So I'm kind of torn on that. I've got, I've got other 856s. I could take the whole grip off and swap it and just to see how it looks and feels and stuff. But I've had 856s before, so I mean, it's not going to feel any different. The only difference is this is not an ultralight. To my knowledge, they do not make an executive series um, in an ultralight. They want it all stainless steel so that they can have uniform finish, um, uniform texture, and do all the hand polishing. Non-adjustable rear sight just uses that channel, and it comes with a simple front blade. However, like the other 856s, that is pinned in. So Ameriglow has a really nice front sight. So I can pop that, drive that pin out with a punch carefully so I don't scrap up the really nice, uh, scratch up the, the really nice hand lap surface. But once that pin is out, this will slide out of that channel and Ameriglow and other companies make a nice ramped sight that has a bright orange high-vis dot for you to see in the daytime. But in the center of that, it's not a full dot, it's a circle. And then in the center of that dot is your tritium. And so at night, you get the advantage of a night sight. So a lot of times with night sights, they're great at night, but not so much in the day and vice versa. Ameriglow's um, version, kind of like what you get on a SIG 365 with their day glow or whatever they call it. Um, it, it, it should work great. So I'm going to see how much that is. And then I'll take all five minutes to carefully, um, put this down, tape it all up and then just take a tap and a small punch and ding, 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 knock that out. And then you can put in your other site, just being careful not to miss and scratch and hit that. So you might want to tape it all up, but, um, yeah, so this is six shot versus five. So yes, this thing is, is an air weight. It's very small. Not quite pocket friendly, although some people will carry it in the pocket. So this is definitely a bigger gun. However, you've got a three inch barrel, so you've definitely got a little bit longer sight radius. You're gonna have a little bit more velocity, which for a 38 special, you want. The downside is it's gonna be a bit heavier on your hip, but you should have better inherent accuracy, as well as it being a bit heavier. A 38 plus P out of this, I can shoot it. I wouldn't say it's fun, but I can I can do a range session with that just to practice and do drills. But it's not pleasurable. Um, this having the extra weight and the longer barrel um, and a bit more grip to grab onto, I think is going to be a lot more comfortable shooting, for sure. Um, it's a little large for concealed carry. I just wanted it because it's a beautiful revolver. I don't know necessarily that I'm going to carry this bad boy, other than occasionally just because you can. But um, my feeling is kind of like, well, why would I carry a six-shot revolver when smaller and lighter, I can get 12 plus one or 11 plus one rounds of nine millimeter, right? In a smaller package. Or, I mean, for this size, I mean, you're almost up to like a Glock 19. So as far as size and weight, the Glock 19 will weigh more once you load it up with ammo. But you're in that ballpark is my point. But I got to say, man, that fit and finish, I really like the job they've done here. I mean, that is beautifully, beautifully executed. It's a really nice job. And that trigger, again, fourth time, clear, still clear. I'm going to go ahead and say it. This trigger feels a little harder, like the pull. It feels like it's a little bit more. But I'll tell you, it's smoother and it's shorter. That's a really nice trigger pull. I mean, Taurus has a decent trigger pull. Now, that's the the double action on a brand new Taurus on most of them. I felt, yeah, it could be a little better. But they do tend to smooth out over time. Just like anything, the metal wears on each other. The metal parts kind of hone and polish each other and get rid of any little micro burrs and abrasions and things. And they tend to smooth out. I will say out of the box, this is this is easily the best trigger I've had on a Taurus. And like I said, it feels like the poundage might be slightly more than the than this one. But this one seems to pull shorter. It's definitely a shorter trigger pull. So I think we'll help with accuracy. We're going to go to the range and we're going to test a, a bunch of my different revolvers. I haven't done a nice, a proper, like comparing this to the small stubby 
to the Rhino and things like that. Um, as far as holsters go, it should fit all my standard 856 holsters. So I've got one here. Um, I don't know if that's 1711 or something I got off of uh, the Amazons, but that just fits it like a glove. Really nice. Um, I've got this other one here. This is a Galco, and it's just kind of a soft holster, but that was supposed to be for a three inch Taurus Defender. And it looks like. So it will move out because it doesn't have the hammer there, but it won't come out of the holster, but it will flop around a little bit. So this one was made to catch here and have that hammer kind of hook it. And because that's not there, it's allowing it to slide out, but it isn't going to go anywhere. You're not going to lose it. And then I've got a Phobos. This is the RU-101. So I use this for 856s, even though it's made for the Ruger SP-101, but it actually fits really nice. So that's a nice clicks in. You can adjust the tension, but that's it smacking against that. It's not it rattling around if I hold it like this. Yeah, you can adjust the tension and just click it right in. Um, I think for something like this, I really kind of like that. I really kind of like that. I think it looks excellent. It looks classy, gentlemanly, nice, smooth draw. Again, you can adjust the tension there. And uh, yeah, I'll say here's what... So what, because this is so hand polished and smooth on the aluminum frame, there's a slight pebbling, there's a slight texture. And so what it was doing um, on my Taurus 85 ultralight is on this particular holster, that rubber piece, which looks like a piece of automotive hose that the bolt goes through and squishes and flanges it out to put more pressure to kind of adjust the tension. Um, but every time you'd pull the, the other, uh, uh, revolver out, it would leave black on there and you have to put a little oil actually because it wouldn't just wipe off. It'd be down in those little micro pores. Here, it's actually not making any because it's so smooth. It's just rubbing off of it. It's not actually, yeah, really nice. That's a good holster for that. I'll, I'll see if I can find a link for that. Very cool gun. Um, I've wanted one for a while. And I put it on my watch list. I sold the mic because you know, last time I had one, I, did, I got there and someone had already bought it. So I, I told them, I'm like, next one you get in stock. Before you even send out that email to everybody saying, hey, here's what we got today. Put it aside. Let me know. I will come in and look at it. So I went in today and came home with it. I'm selling a bunch of my other guns to cover the cost and some other stuff. So net, uh, nothing out of pocket, uh, you know, but uh, I'm definitely digging it. I'm torn on putting on smaller grips just to make it a little more carry friendly, but I feel like that takes away from the aesthetic and the feel, certainly. Um, it's very elegant. It's very clean. That's a really nice set of grips. They did a really good job of fitting this. Someone took their time and made sure this was all sanded properly and then stained. On the back, you don't even feel the damn seam between the two halves. Like, that is a really, really nice set of grips. I'm pretty sure they said Adamant, which... Normally, you go get a set of nice grips. They can be anywhere from like 50 to 80, 90 bucks, depending on what wood and what finish. You know, if you want walnut versus palfero or, you know, ironwood, or, you know, something like that. Um, they're not cheap. That Pelican case is not cheap. So when you think about it, okay, $508, it's a lot for a Taurus revolver. Although not for like the Raging 454 and some of the big ones. But as far as their small 38s, yeah, that's kind of pricey. But you're getting a, a really nice trigger, like a Smith quality trigger, easily. Uh, uh, that is as good as any of the Smiths I've ever owned. Now, I've never had a, you know, a performance center that was then sent off and tuned by a pro or something like Jerry Mikulik or whatever his name is, um, you know, has. But anything I've ever felt that is as good as anything I've ever felt from any other revolver company. So impressed with that. Impressed with the beautiful fit and finish. And you get a really nice Pelican case and a really nice set of grips. So I got nothing to complain about. There's a reason why, you know, do the grips alone in the box is that's $100 easily of the additional price. And so for the extra $100, what are you getting over the price of the gun itself? A really nice hand-tuned trigger and a beautiful, beautiful finish. Really, really nice. I'm going to enjoy this, this uh, weapon. So anyway, that is the new Executive Series. Taurus getting all fancy on us. So that is a very nice, very, very nice weapon and uh, we'll try and do a review uh at the range sometime maybe uh maybe next week at lunchtime i'll go over there one day when i know the range is slow and 
I can have the place to myself and they won't be wondering why is this doofus putting a camera together. So anyway, everybody have a good one. We'll, we'll talk to you soon.